Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're starting another furniture build. Now this may just look like a pile of rough lumber, but it's not. It's an end table. Let's dive in. So those of you who've been following the channel for a while know that I have made a dresser for my bedroom, I've made the whole bed, and now it's time to make the end table. Um, I'm going to make one, and then eventually my wife is going to make one for her side. We're going to make two different things that are exactly what we want. And I want it to kind of fit the style of what I've been making. So here is um, basically the, the rough design on this. So the way I design is it's all in my head. Everything I design is in my head. I pick one dimension of this that I want to be. In other words, I need it to be the height and the length of this, and then I'll go up and measure a spot that I want, and how wide can it be. Once I have those three pieces in my brain, I come to the, down to the shop and I start building it, because all of the dimensions and everything I need are, are in me. It's not something I think about. However, I need to approve this by my wife, so that means I draw out something in SketchUp. And so we have this rough design in here. Uh, so let's actually take a look and, and go through this. So here is the end table that I want to create. It is um, a bit beefy as it's looking in here, but once you add chamfers onto the corners, it will lighten it out a good bit. Um, and I want it to match the style of the dresser and the bed that will be beside it. And this hashing is the same that is in the, the, the bed up above beside it. It will have a drawer on the front here, and that will come in and out between the styles. It will have a drawer here in the middle that will actually be able to slide out. Um, I like to actually have wood on wood slides. It is, it's the exact same as what I have in the dresser and it just fits me out very well. Also on this with the side stretchers, the tenon will come all the way through the leg on the front and the back. And then the back stretchers will have tenons up here so they actually cross each other inside so they go full length through it. And I haven't decided yet if I want to do a draw bore um, peg in here. I, I can like the look of it and that might match well with the bed, but we'll see. Also, you'll notice that my dovetails, oh, I put them on the wrong side. No, these are show tails um, and I like them this way. So that's what we're going to be doing for this one. So yes, the dovetails will be on the front and back. And I know that's really going to drive some people really crazy, but that's the way we're going to do it. Uh, the back leg comes all the way up and connects with the top. And then into the top, uh, these will be sliding dovetailed in and then the through tenon front to back. Far more connection than you need. And then I'll have figure eight clips attaching the top down to this. It's a relatively simple construction, but there's a lot of little pieces in this and it will take um, a good bit to work with. So when I'm designing this, I'm actually just going with the main measurements. Number one, the length of it, the width of it, and then the height of it. And in this case, we have two heights. So I want this to be below the bed, and I want this to be ever so slightly above the bed. So in my case, I want the bed to be right about where this hash mark is. Uh, so that way, if there is an alarm clock down here, its light is casting at the bed rather than right at my face. If it's up here, I don't want that. But I want this higher so I can put a lamp up here that it goes up above my head. And this allows me to put some junk back in here as well as a junk drawer to go underneath. Uh, and I can put my charging station on here and all of the other stuff. Uh, this is just a design that I really like and uh, that's why I'm gonna be building it. Next, I come over here to my lumber rack and I take a look at what I want. Now I want most of this to be quarter sawn white oak. Um, and thankfully I've got a pretty decent stack of this stuff. Uh, which is over a hundred years old. Um, some of it still has finish on it, some of it's nice and clean. Um, like this one, I'm going to need to do a good bit of work on still. So I'm going to be pulling a lot out of that, but that's not going to be enough. So I do have some more down here, and I actually have a decent amount of white oak and stock. Um, not all corner sawn, but I'll pull out what I can. The question is the top. That needs to be 18 inches wide, and I don't have any 18 inch wide boards. I have a couple that are 12 and a half. So that means I'm going to have to sandwich them together. Um, and I want it to be a full three quarter inch so I can't butterfly. I'm gonna have to kind of play with that. So I'm gonna pull out some scrap and, and see what I can get for the top. And then I'm gonna need some inch and a half inch thick stuff for the legs. And thankfully, I've got quite a bit of inch and a half inch thick white oak that will make some really nice legs. For the hashes, I actually need some stuff that's three eighths. And I've got some of this that has finish on already. It's a little over three eighths of an inch. So I'm going to trim that up for a few of them, but I don't have quite enough of it. So some of it I'm actually going to have to rip because it needs to be three quarter by three eighths. So I'm actually going to rip three quarter stock into three eighths inch strips. Normally, because this is all in my brain, I actually will write out a cut list. And it's a very rough cut list of I need stretchers, I need top, I need back stretchers, I need legs. 
and it's very rough mounts on there. Uh, but because I actually drew this out in SketchUp to hand to my wife and let her take a look at it, uh, and SketchUp it makes it really easy then to just pull out a, a cut list. And so I have on the cut list here, and I can number it, and then I can mark down on all the boards that this is intended for piece number seven, and it's one of two. And, and then I can put on the next one, this is piece number seven, it's one of two or two of two, whatever they need to be. <laughs> and I can go through and make sure I have all the pieces. Now, normally I'm just gonna do this in my head and just go with it. But if you've got a cut list, it makes it very easy just to write it down. Um, and, and this is the kind of the fun part, especially when you're using reclaimed lumber, you're not pulling it all from new stock. You're kind of working around knots and you're gonna be cutting a little bit off of either end and you're, you're imagining all these pieces coming together. Right now, I'm just making sure I have enough material, and I'm probably going to be pulling out more than I need, but I'm going to be putting a sticker on every single piece, notifying this is intended to be for piece number two. Uh, and I'm just kind of working through that. Most of it, I can get out of that old quarter saw yeah. stock, but some of it, I'm actually going to have to pull out of some of this other stuff. And I have this piece that's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it's almost 13 inches wide in the middle, uh, but I need to make a top that is 18 so. inches wide. So that means I need nine inches in the middle. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna have to kind of play with this. Where do I want to pull it out? Because I'm not gonna be able to butterfly it. I don't have a piece that's thick enough to resaw down the middle and butterfly it. And I want it to be full three quarters. So the top's not gonna be perfect. But you can see on this one, the grain kind of goes at an angle. And so if I match those together, I can kind of make that line disappear between them. Though usually I prefer the line to be perfectly in line with the, the seam. I'd rather butterfly them, but oh well. So we're gonna kind of play around with this and see where can I pull these pieces out of to get all of this done. And then slap a, a sticker on there to notify, yeah, we can use this. And most of it I can get out of this stock here. I was thinking I was gonna have to go to the lumber yard and pick up some more, but I was very, very happy to find out that uh, indeed we were actually able to uh, get it out of what I had in stock. And of course this project requires a blood sacrifice, so I figured I'd get that out of the way early. Um, yeah. Uh, now we can start actually laying this out and figuring out what we want. The first thing I'm going to do is cut all the pieces to length. Unless I need to pull them uh, two pieces out of the board side by side, uh, I'm going to uh, cut everything to length. If I do need to pull two pieces out of one board side by side, then I'll rip it down. This is one of the times where my buck saw actually comes out. It cuts incredibly fast. It leaves a really rough line. But for this breakdown of rough stock, uh, this is this is where it really shines. I mean, I'm making everything about a half inch longer than it needs to be. This is just rough estimates of what I what I need. So we can then have a stickered board for every piece I need, and every one of them is much larger than it needs to be. There's a lot of slop to uh, to cut in length because there's going to be problems in the future, and I'm not going to cut anything to its final shape until it's actually ready to fit into the project because things are going to change. Even if you have the most perfect plans in the world, nothing is going to come out right, and there's no sense in cutting the whole cut list ahead of time as long as you have the board set aside that, yeah, I can get that piece out of this board, the board doesn't have to be its final dimensions. For all of the legs, uh, most of them are actually coming out of this inch and a half material, and I'm going to be cutting those uh, side by side, but they come in pairs, so I'm going to cut them to length, and then I'll be able to pull out two boards out of one particular piece. This is one of the few times where my framing square comes out, and it's just a, a simple rough square that allows me to draw these lines that I can then follow. I don't need anything specific for this, and it doesn't matter because my edge isn't jointed, so squaring to it really isn't going to be as useful, but I just need a general line to follow, uh, particularly with these wider boards that I'll be using for the, the face. Uh, we want to make sure that there's enough on there. As a word to the wise, don't get a charley horse when sawing on the saw horse. Uh, you're going to end up with problems, and you're going to knock things all over the place, and you're probably going to hit your cameraman. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so most of this I end up doing at the bench, though some of it I will do at the, the saw bench. Um, I'll use some of one, some of another. Again, making everything bigger than it needs to be and getting it close to shape. Once everything is roughly cut to length, uh, then we can start to bring some of the pieces into, into alignment. I'm going to actually have a mark on every piece so that it is set aside for this particular project. But now we can actually start moving our brain to the actual carcass because we're only going to rip pieces down to their exact size that we're going to be using. And this is going to be some of the, uh, the, the basic pieces, the, the stretchers and the legs that connect for the main carcass. So we're going to start with those and work out from there. Uh, but yeah, as well with other things, um, some of these little pieces, I just wanted to mark them off, and it was actually easy to cut these in between. Uh, it came out of an old desk uh, that was made over 100 years ago in Michigan, 
and uh, it had been glued together with hide glue and it had been falling apart and the glue had, had given out on it. So all of the boards actually that were glued together broke at the glue seam. It was kind of a nice piece because I have all of these original boards from the original uh, cut and joint marks. But these little ones were originally hash mark in a mission style desk and so they will get reworked into hash work into this end table. Uh, just kind of a, a nice little setup on it. But once we get these all set up and ready to go, then we can start working on the carcass itself. But that's a video for another time. So there, this is the first step. Uh, normally, I don't cut anything anywhere near its final dimensions. I try and leave everything as rough as possible. I'll start with the skirt and build out from there. And I only cut things down to their final dimensions when I'm actually ready to start their joinery. It's always good to leave yourself some wiggle room. Don't cut everything to the cut list right off the bat because you're gonna run into problems. Things are gonna change. You moved a board accidentally and now you have to remake a bunch of other things. So keep things as big as you can. Just identify all the lumber so that you don't accidentally use it for something else. And this way I can just set this all aside and when it's time to actually start working on that, I can get that piece and then I can mill those pieces down to what they need to be. So this build will probably end up being about four or five videos as we're going to take it step by step and go through the whole carcass, the drawer, the top shelf, the hashing, the finish. Um, we've got lots of things to do in this and it's a really cool project because there's a lot of pieces and a lot of fun joinery in this uh, in one small little nice package. So I will be providing plans for this eventually. Um, I want to actually build this, work through all of the issues, and then I can get that into the plans. So if you're watching this and all the videos have been up, the plans, there's a link to that down below. And if you're watching this and I haven't finished it up yet, um, hold on. Um, I will be providing the rough sketch to patrons on Patreon as I come through it. So if you want to follow along with that, you can become a patron on Patreon. So I hope you like this project and how we go through it. Uh, this will be a very fun one, and I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas, comments down below. Let me know that. I do answer as many comments as I can get to, and I read through all of them. So thank you. Putting comments down below, hitting like, share, subscribe, those do help us out. They get this in front of more people, and they help the algorithm here on YouTube. So thank you for that. It is an easy way to help. If you want to take it one step farther, there are a bunch of people who are scrolling over here on the side. They are the patrons on Patreon. Along with them and members here on the channel who click the little join button down below, uh, we are able to keep going. We, we, are, we are completely sponsored by you, the viewer, and thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about that, you can go in the description down below. There's a link to Patreon or click the little join button and become a member here. We do have special perks as well as early looking at different things. So thank you. On that note, I think I'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. This isn't a boring project. We haven't drilled any holes yet. However, I am currently bored.